Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. So, as I said in my previous video, GNOME offers, by default, very few customization options. Fortunately, there is a solution. GNOME Tweaks. Let's take a look. Installation. GNOME Tweaks should be available in most distributions repositories. Just look for it in your software center or app center and install it. If you can't find it, you might need to enable additional repositories such as the Universe repo on Ubuntu. The package name is often gnome-tweak-tool. Once it is installed, you can start it like any regular application, through the Activities view for example. What does it offer? Gnome Tweaks allows you to change a lot of GNOME's default behaviors, most notably enabling themes and changing icons and mouse cursors. It also allows you to enable extensions to further customize your GNOME desktop, as well as modifying window behavior, workspaces, title bars, keyboard shortcuts and fonts. While you won't get the same number of options as, for example, KDE, you can still tweak a lot of things to your liking. The only feature I won't cover here is extensions, which I'll talk about in the next video. General and Appearance the general options host a few tweaks, such as enabling or disabling animations, or choosing whether to suspend your laptop when you close the lid, as well as activating over-amplification for sound, meaning you can increase volume past 100%, at the cost of sound quality, of course. The Appearance tab is probably the number one reason why you'll want to install GNOME tweaks. It allows you to change and tweak the appearance of the GNOME shell and the applications. Now you can change the application's theme. This is how buttons, tabs, selected items and menus will look like. By default, GNOME uses the Advaita theme and Ubuntu uses the Yaru theme, but there are plenty more. Obviously, not all themes will work with all applications. GNOME does not officially support themes, which means that applications that use custom controls might appear broken with some themes. Nevertheless, if you want to install a theme, you can download it from gnomelook.org and unzip it in your .themes folder in your home folder. It's a hidden folder, so you'll have to show hidden files by pressing Ctrl plus H in a files window. You can then create the folder yourself if you need to, just don't forget to add the dot at the start of the name. You can also change the cursor theme as well. Depending on your distro, you might have a few cursor themes available, and you can install some new ones in the .icons folder in your home directory. Next is the icons. As with cursors, you can download new icon themes on gnome-look.org and unzip them in the .icons folder. They should show up in GNOME Tweaks afterwards. This will change all icons, whether they are application icons, icons that appear on buttons and toolbars, or even system and settings icons. Finally, you'll get the GNOME Shell theme. This changes the appearance of the top bar, the activities view, the applications menu, the system indicators, as well as the favorite star. This one is locked by default on many distributions. You'll see a small warning symbol next to the drop-down menu, which will be inactive. To enable changing that theme, you'll need to activate the User Themes extension. On some distros, you can just enable it from the Extensions tab of GNOME Tweaks, but on others, you'll need to install the extension first. To do so, install the GNOME-Shell-Extensions package from distros repositories. On Ubuntu, for example, you'll need to open a terminal and type sudo apt install gnome-shell-extensions. Once it's done, they should show up in GNOME Tweaks. You might have to log out and log back in for it to be taken into account. When the user themes extension is enabled, you can then select GNOME Shell themes. To install new ones, just download them from gnomelook.org, then extract them in the .themes folder. It should show up in the drop-down menu afterwards. You can finally also change the sound theme here. Each sound theme will come with its install script or instructions, just download them on GNOME Look and follow the instructions added in the README file. Finally, the Appearance tab allows you to change the wallpaper and the login background, as well as the adjustment of the image, whether you want it zoomed or scaled, or adapted to your screen. Desktop. These settings allow you to add some desktop icons back, with the Show Icons option, and to select which icons you want to show, such as a shortcut to your home folder, to connected network servers, the trash can, or mountain disks. Fonts. Here, you can modify the font used throughout the whole desktop. The interface text modifies the font used in applications and in GNOME Shell. 
from the font family to the boldness or the size. Document text changes the font used in default documents and PDFs, and the monospace text is the font used in your terminal, for example. You can also change the hinting setting, which will affect how fonts will be rendered on your monitor, as well as the anti-aliasing to smooth out the edges of each letter. The scaling factor can be changed here to automatically make everything bigger or smaller to avoid tweaking the font sizes too much. Keyboard and mouse. Here you'll find some settings to change how your input devices behave and work. In the keyboard sections, you'll get options to enable more input choices in the settings for choosing different keyboard layouts, or to change the keyboard shortcuts to follow those used in the Emacs text editor if you're familiar with these. You can also change what key you'll use as the Compose key, which is used to input additional specific characters such as these used in some Latin languages. Finally, you can change which key is used to show the activities. By default, it's the left super key, but you can change that to the right super key as well. In the mouse settings, you can tweak the cursor's acceleration profile, which can be useful if you're using bigger displays and want to reach the corners easily without having to wiggle your mouse too much. You can also enable the pointer location when pressing Ctrl to show exactly where your mouse pointer is. This is useful for tutorials or as an accessibility feature. The touchpad section only hosts one option, the possibility to enable or disable the touchpad while you are typing, to avoid misclicking when using a laptop. Finally, mouse click emulation allows you to switch between three profiles to produce a right click on a touchpad, either by the use of two fingers when clicking, or by using an array on the touchpad. Clicking in the bottom right corner of the touchpad will then produce a right click, and in the bottom middle for a middle mouse wheel click. Startup applications. This is pretty self-explanatory. You can add here some apps that will automatically be started when you boot up your session. Just click on the plus icon to open a pop-up window and select which app you'd like to launch at startup. Top bar. These options allow you to change the behavior of GNOME's top panel. In here, you can enable or disable the hot corner for the activities, meaning that when you put your mouse up in the top left corner, the activities will show up automatically without having to click on the button itself. You can also disable applications menus, these pop-up menus appearing in the top bar. Those menus will then appear in the window itself instead of in the top panel. You can also show or hide the battery percentage if you're using a laptop, as well as customize the clock by showing or hiding the weekday, the date or the seconds. Finally, you can elect to show or hide week numbers in the pop-up calendar that appears when you click the date in the top panel. Window Title Bars Default GNOME apps don't use a complete title bar, only a header bar that fuses the title bar of old with a toolbar. You can change here how it behaves, such as what a double-click, middle-click or right-click will do on such a header bar. You can also enable or disable additional window controls, such as the Minimize or the Maximize button, and their placement on the left or on the right of the window. Windows This panel allows you to change the behavior of your application's windows. The first option, Attach Model Dialogs, allows you to choose whether the small windows, such as Alert Messages or Open Safe Dialogs, are locked to their parent window or not. By default, these pop-up windows are locked to their parent window and can't be moved individually. The Edge Tiling option allows you to disable tiling, the action of dragging a window to a side or the top of the screen to automatically resize it. You can also choose to automatically center new windows and enable resizing with the secondary click. This means that while holding the super key, you can press the right mouse button and drag the cursor to resize a window. If that super key does not work for you, you can select to use the alt key instead. Finally, you can change how window focus works. You can select click to focus to require clicking on an application to make it the active window, focus on hover to automatically focus the window on which your mouse pointer is, or secondary click, which seems misnamed since it only means that the behavior will be the same as the previous one, except the window will lose focus if the cursor hovers over the desktop. The raise window when focused will also bring the window to the forefront of the screen when it is focused. Workspaces. Here you can tweak how workspaces work. The dynamic workspaces option, activated by default, will automatically create a new workspace as soon as you have at least one window in all other active workspaces, and delete any empty workspace. 
Switching this to the static workspace option, we'll instead use a fixed number for workspaces, a number that you can define right in the field below. The display handling options will allow you to select between workspaces on primary display only, which means that workspaces are only created on the primary display and the secondary display stays fixed, or you can choose workspaces span displays, which means that all displays will be included in the workspace. Switching workspaces will also switch windows on the secondary display. So here we are with the two of GNOME Tweaks features. It is, in my opinion, pretty much mandatory if you want to be able to tweak how GNOME works, and it adds a ton of customization options. I didn't talk about extensions yet, since this is a major topic, I'd like to cover it in a dedicated video, which will be the next one in this series. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! If you enjoyed, please consider liking, subscribing, and turning on notifications. You can also follow me on Twitter at the Linux EXP. Thank you guys for watching, and goodbye!